Hi everyone, this is me Bianca. Welcome to Supra Chat Live with Pri. And today I have a wonderful guest with me. Uh, she will be joining me in any minute. I want you all to shower all your love and support to this beautiful Queen Antonia Porcel. And I am just waiting for her to join in. Hi everyone. First of all, thank you so much for all the love. And Anne is here, so I'll quickly add her. All right, she's here. Okay. Hi, and first of all, I'll do this for you. Swadika. Namaste. <laughs> How are you, Anne? I'm so excited for this live chat. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited also. <laughs> all right. I'll quickly start with the live chat. You can show me, right, Anne? Yeah. You can show me well, right? Yeah. Perfect. All right, um, and I know this is an extremely difficult time, you know, for the world as well. And for you to be reigning during this uh, pandemic, where the world is in a mess, how are you keeping calm? And I would also want to know how are you spending your quarantine period? Well, I agree with you. It's definitely hard to be a reigning queen in a time where we have to all stay home. Um, I'm. I would say I'm pretty calm. Um, I don't know why I'm calm. I think it's because I know that I have the security of being at home and I don't choose to go outside. <laughs> um, How is your family doing during this time? I'm sorry to come oh, here. It's okay. Um, they're, they're pretty calm as well. My dad, um, he was very, you know, reading all the news. He was a bit panicky at the beginning, but I think once he you know, started to see that, um, you know, it's, I mean, it is serious, but he got his, he would occupy his time with work and stuff. So I think he's starting to slowly have another train of thought. But I think I must say, I kind of like it because I like being at home. And oh, so you're an introvert? Um, sort of, a little bit of both. I like to be at home okay. because I like to take lots of naps. Um, but I also like to go outside, um, but not right now. Um, I've been, you know, catching up on some series that I missed. Um, mm -hmm. I try some new makeup looks. I actually tried a new look today. I don't know if anyone noticed. <laughs> okay. Oh, we um, would love to see your videos as well. Oh, thank you. I will try and make one since I have all the time now. But I also want to, you know, always be accessible to people so i try to do lives more often now than before um and making sure that everyone is you know being safe being responsible and reminding them that if they do really need to leave the house to leave only for the essential things like going to the grocery store going to the pharmacy and of course to always wear a mask hand sanitizer in your pocket and always washing your hands and of course you know don't touch your face so all right, a lot of love, lot of love coming your way, and from Indonesia, Cambodia, Cambodia, so like so many people. Perfect. So, Anna, I'll quickly take some of the questions that I have. All right. Yeah. Um, you are a well-traveled person, and you know, being half Danish and half Thai, you literally had best of both the worlds. Now, I want to know how, like, growing up, how has traveling evolved you as a person? I think um, because I've lived in so many countries and I've been exposed to many different cultures and, you know, I've been able to have the opportunity to meet different people, different, different personalities, different cultures. And I think that actually has made me very open minded and very understanding of how people act, why they act a certain way, why they talk a certain way. And I think it just makes me a very... I'm not bragging, but I think <laughs> um, it kind of opens your mind and your heart to um, thinking more about other people rather than jumping to conclusions very quickly. All right. Uh, we have a question from Sadman Hafiz, and he wants to know, what is the main responsibility of Miss Supranational post-crowning? After the crowning? Um, yes. Well, importantly, it is to, you know, unite people, unite 
uh, different cultures, different people, different ways of thinking, despite the borders that separate us. It's to encourage mm -hmm. people to be more accepting of one another and just, you know, being a well-rounded person, but also bringing that out of other people as you travel to different countries. And just, you know, supernatural is technically the meaning of what I just said. And I think that this, this pageant really does a really good job because they've given me the opportunity to travel to so many countries already. And just the openness of the this supranational organization really represents what they stand for. And I've observed that, that all the supra queens are super friendly. And I have seen that kind of bonding and love in supranational family. That is incredible. And I must congratulate you as well. And there were so many fans who have sent you love. I can't even tell you. I was flooded with messages. Oh, People wanted to say that you are beautiful, you are gorgeous. So you have a lot of lovers, surely, didn't you as well? Thank you so much. I really love all the fans. Like I can't, I don't know how to show how much I appreciate all the fans because I'm so overwhelmed as well. I didn't think there would be so many people that would, you know, love me the way they they do. <laughs> so I just want to thank everyone for your support. And yes, we have a Supra family. We call ourselves the Supra family and all the queens are Supra sisters. And yes. even though I knew Valeria, I got like comments from the previous queens saying congratulations. So just because like you won a couple years ago doesn't mean that you're forgotten. We all like yeah. we're a big family and everyone really is so close to one another and that's so sweet. I really, really love it that I'm a part of a family rather than like an organization. I can tell you that you radiate that positivity. I can actually feel that positivity right now during this live chat as well. Your smile, I think it's infectious. That is the infection we need at the we need right now, not coronavirus at all. Yeah. Okay. I'll quickly take more questions. Um yeah. Deeksha Narang wants to ask how to create a charismatic personality on stage. Oh, this one is really difficult because <laughs> I will just say right now that um, being me before the competition, before the pageant, I was very, very yep. shy. I was very self-cautious. I was not confident at all i was so sure i was not gonna win but i think what changed my mentality was being in the competition for three weeks and just the process of getting there you know you have to really change your mindset you have to change your way of thinking yeah. if you go into the competition and you're not confident in what you bring to the table you've already lost it's all about mindset and I think I've told this story already where I actually, during the Miss Supranational Thailand pageant, there was a bikini shoot and I was okay. really, really scared of this shoot because I wasn't ready like physically for it. And I went downstairs to my dad and I just started crying. I was like, I can't do this. Okay. I, I'm not confident. I don't want to pose in a bikini. Like I'm so scared. And one thing that he said to me that really completely flipped my way of thinking was um because i told him you know i'm not gonna win so i just want to quit and he was like how do you know you're not gonna win have you tried your best yet i said no have you tried and ha have you tried it all and i was like no so how do you know you're not gonna win if you don't try your best at what you're scared of you don't know whether you're gonna succeed or not and that was really what brought my confidence level from like a zero to like maybe a seven. <laughs> um, but then yeah. during the competition, I was just like, I kind of absorbed the energy from all the girls and the, you know, the staff members, the team. And to the point where I, I was in the backstage and yep. I was like, you know what? There is nothing else I can do at this point anymore. I want to be here. I want the judges to see my personality through how I walk on stage because these judges, they don't know me. So I need to show them what kind of personality I have. 
And okay. whether they have chosen a winner yet or not, that is something I cannot control. So let me just do my best, be happy, absorb the moment, and the judges will see that through your energy and the vibes that you bring out. And I think that's really like, when I look back, I'm so glad I actually thought that because if I had gone in, I was just like, oh my God, I'm not going to win. I'm so scared. I think I would have been sitting, I would not have been sitting here. I would not yeah. have won. And I would have regretted the whole experience because I know that I could have, tr could have done better. So I think it's really changing your mindset and really believing in yourself and knowing that you did your best. You literally blood, sweat and tears bring it all out and let them see who you really are. And I think that was actually, we could see that you were phenomenal on that stage. And it was quite obvious that, you know, you have it in you to win that. So we are very happy with that. Uh, uh, quickly, I'll ask another question. Akash, 21 wants to know the meaning of your name, Antonio. Yeah, we would love to know the meaning of your name. I would also love to know. I feel like I've gotten like three different explanations for my name. But okay. um, one explanation that my parents told me was actually when they were living in India, they were okay. watching a French film. Okay. I, I think my mom was still pregnant with me at the time and they were figuring out what they wanted to name me and I couldn't figure it out because I didn't want a name that was very common. And I think the character in this movie was like... Uh, a smart, beautiful French lady whose name was Antonia, I think. I'm okay. not sure. And then they were like, why not this name? And the beginning of my name, A-N-N, -N, is actually a Danish name, Anne, which is why it's spelled A-N-N, okay. -N, not A-N. And what they really liked about the name was that you can say it in any country and it can still sound like I'm from that country. So if you say it in like okay. an accent or a Danish accent or a Thai accent, it comes out, but it still sounds a little bit from that country. So okay. it's a very international name. Um, but yeah, it's definitely different. So Yeah, I it's definitely an interesting story. story. Yeah. All right. Oh, no, and I saw in one of your interviews that, you know, you said that you were already involved in a lot of charities. So I just want to know that, uh, you know, after winning the title, uh, have people looked at you differently or what has been the biggest change in your life post winning the Super National? Because I said, I, I read that you were already a part of a lot of, uh, you know, charities. Uh, so has life changed post that? Have people see, like started seeing you differently? Um, not, I don't think people have seen me differently. They just see me as like that I had won the crown. So people recognize me more, which is obviously different than what it was like before. Um, but I don't think people see me differently because I try to show my personality. I try to be as much of me as I can when I meet people so that they don't um, kind of think I'm one person with them and then another person with someone else. So okay. I try to be as relatable and approachable as possible when I meet people so that they don't get the wrong idea and in terms of like the charities it's definitely um harder now because before it was like very school school related and now yeah we've really branched out we've managed to start a movement that all universities can be a part of so this is um definitely something i would like to work more on um and okay. i think that having the title also helps you know, spread the word more to a more wider audience. Um, True. I'm really grateful for that. Um, but I don't think a lot of people have changed. Oh, sorry. I don't think a lot of people see me differently because when I like when I'm with, doing an interview or when I'm with the press, I think my I try to make it as down to earth as possible, so everyone's comfortable. <laughs> All right, perfect. Now, Novia and Adeline wants to know about your journey before being crowned Miss Supernatural. They would want to know more about your life before the crowning. Um, Maybe your upbringing. Yeah. 
Yeah, but if we go like way back, I would okay. never, ever, ever consider being in a beauty pageant. Honestly, I think maybe it was 2015 was the first time I had actually watched maybe half of a beauty pageant. And I was like, wow, I okay. wish I could be that confident. And then I was just kind of like the back of my mind. Because I was very much into sports. I was very sporty. I played like sports all the time. I was kind of like a tomboy, I guess. I didn't really care about looks so much. And as a kid, it wasn't really a priority for me. So I didn't know that you could actually do something with your looks. And I wasn't exactly the prettiest <laughs> at the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was very different. And one day, and I also love food. Okay, you don't even understand how much I love food. So just like being very into sports, loving food, not caring about looks is kind of not really what you would expect from a beauty queen. <laughs> so come when I got the call, they were like, it was my friend who was like, do you want to try and compete for Miss Supranational? <laughs> I was okay. like, okay, why not? Why not? I mean, I didn't expect to win, but I was just like, if there's an experience that's very rare why not try it um okay so i had to stop doing my sports as often because i didn't want to have like bruises all over my legs um and i i think most of it was the physical part however the you know the thinking the way of thinking how i answered my questions i think that kind of stayed the same because i okay. went to i think it's because i went to an international school and my way of thinking was kind of how I maintained it throughout the competition. Um, but during my training before I went to Poland, it was more like how to structure my answers because my answers were either very, very long and I would have like one idea that would branch out to many ideas. So nobody would really understand okay. how my answer was. So it was more about structure and how to be more ladylike, you know, like sitting up straight, how to cross your leg. That was probably the hardest lesson for me. Um, but it's been a very tough journey, especially mentally, as I've mentioned before. But in the end, it was all with it. I understand there's a lot of stress. I mean, it's it's hard being a beauty queen. People just see the beauty aspect. But I think it's very stressful. So I want to ask you, I'm sure that during your pageant as well, you were going through a lot of stress. So how did you overcome all of that? Um, I think a lot of the stress was trying to please everyone back home. And I was, for me, I can, I can read Thai, but very slowly. And if it's very long, I don't read it in, in terms of the comments. Okay. So whether it was like a negative comment or a positive comment, I wouldn't really pay attention to it. Um, so the stress was more of me overthinking. And okay. I overcame it really by just being present in the moment and forgetting about meeting other people's expectations because the fact that I've already gotten this far is already an achievement and Definitely. the only person I need to be you know the only person I need to please is myself really because I put myself through all of this training and all of this hard work if I'm not doing my best in this moment and thinking about myself then I've already I'm already like three steps behind everyone else. So just really being in the moment was how I deal, dealt with it. All right. I have a lot of questions uh, for you. So I'll quickly take more questions. Uh, Devita Rai wants to ask, what has been the hard hardest obstacle you had to overcome in your pageant journey? Um, and these answers will help a lot of girls, I must say. I would say... When I went, I would just tell you a little bit of the backstory. When I went on the first day, I all I saw the girls. And I was already like, oh my gosh, they're all so beautiful, and they all look so fit. And there's no way I'm winning this if I look the way I look. I was not confident in my my body at all. Um, but. What I found really important throughout the whole journey was that, you know, I should not listen to all the negativity that I create in my own head. 
because okay. it's me criticizing myself and that's not going to help me get better. I need to look at the things that I love about myself. I need to see that okay, I might not be as skinny or as fit as this girl over here, but I have this and I have this as well. That might be a factor that is more important than my physical appearance. And if I'm confident in everything else that I bring, whether it's how I answer my questions, how I'm thinking, you know, whether how my confidence is, how I walk, whatever it is, I have to be confident in those aspects and hope that the judges see that as well because and it's so and as well as like me joining the pageant, I was really thinking like okay, if you know, physical appearance is something you can change and you have the access you have the accessibility to change. But True. what's inside, you know, what how you think, how you talk to people, your kindness, your consideration of others and your respect are things that you can't just change in the snap of a finger. These are things that you grow up learning. This is the stuff that make you who you are and that is something you should be proud of and confident about. Because the physical appearance doesn't matter if who they're looking for or what they're looking for in a winner is quality. So that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, physical appearance, I can change anytime I want. But I know that I have something else that is stronger. So let's focus on that. And then the next question is around the uh, beauty standards also only. Uh, Gorak Bangwal wants to ask, society thinks pageants are just about looking glamorous. So what would be your one sentence to tell the world that behind the la layer of makeup, they are more than just a glamorous face. So in just one sentence, what do you want to tell the world? Um, I feel like this was my answer for the final question. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it, my answer was very relatable to, to this as well. So yeah. I think I'm going to go with that and say that we need to put in more effort to get to know people on the inside rather than judging on True. the outer aspects of, especially in a pageant. Like I said, appearance is one thing, but if what's inside is not attractive it doesn't matter how beautiful you are definitely i'll quickly read some of the comments that are coming here because a lot of people are commenting uh rushi says she is so positive and inspiring oh thank you so sweet okay I don't think not once well. i get very shy but trust me, and I have to say a lot of compliment coming your way um not one says love you miss thailand love you too all right, I'll quickly take more questions for you because you had a lot of questions coming your way. Um, I will ask you this one. Okay. We have a special question from Jessica Patriana, oh. Miss Supernatural 2008, second runner up. And she wants to know would you want to come back to Indonesia someday? Is that even a question? Of course, I want to come back. Aku <laughs> cinta. No, I, I really loved Indonesia. The, the trip there was so amazing. They were all so really like, oh my God, I can't even. They were so welcoming, so warm. And you really felt appreciated there. And especially with Jessica, to be honest, we didn't really talk that much during the competition. But mm -hmm. when I got to Indonesia, she was so loving, so welcoming. And we got the opportunity to go to a home that she has been working with for I think three years mm -hmm. already for kids with HIV and it was really so amazing to be there and just like their the love they have for her is so beautiful and vice versa as well so just being able to experience that and being a part of the happiness and the environment there really made us all very emotional <laughs> Andre included <laughs> Um, so I would love to go back and the support from the Indonesian pageant lovers is so trust me really. yes it is even right oh, now they are commenting so much yes so I all the Indonesian fans 
<laughs> I need to get that one right now. Talking about Indonesia, I have to say you look breathtakingly beautiful in kebaya. So, how was your experience wearing that? You were looking like I mean a princess, I must say. And I'm I was oh looking God, at the pictures. Was, yeah, it was so. So, how amazing. was it feeling? Yeah, it was. I remember Andre was telling me, you know, Valeria, she cried when she wore her kabaya, and I was like, I'm not gonna cry, okay. I'm not like, you know, because she was very overwhelmed at how beautiful it was, and I was like, I don't think I'll cry, but I think I'll be happy. And then the moment I walked out and I looked at myself in the mirror, I was like, <laughs> oh. I was tearing because it's just like so overwhelming how. The whole team takes so much time and effort to create a piece of art that comes all the way, like through their history, and they hand stitch everything just for you to fit you. And it's like I feel so honored and grateful to be able to wear a piece of their culture. And you know, it was just very overwhelming, and it looked so beautiful. I've never worn anything like it before, and I was so so happy. Oh my gosh! So, Are you traveling to Indonesia? You as well. I yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Now, and you travel to Indonesia, India, and also Vietnam. What is that one thing you're missing about these countries? And I know you traveled to these countries before as well. But what is that one thing that you still miss about these countries? Um, if I had to choose one thing that was that I missed of all three, I would say the food and the people. <laughs> Although, you are a foodie. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely a foodie. <laughs> um, all the different um, trips were very different from each other. I uh, so mm -hmm. I can't really compare when people ask me which yeah. one do you like more because they're all very different. But one thing I really loved was. No matter how different the country was or how different the people were, they were all what what was in, what they had in common was their kindness and the warmth that they shared with me when I arrived. And it's just really nice. I think it's just nice in general when people appreciate you being there, and you know you just feel their energy and start experiencing the new tastes, of course. Um, but yeah, it was just really nice being able to meet all these people and just getting to know them as well. All right. Now, Veronica James has a request, actually. Um, she wants to see your Miss Supra's tiara that you're allowed to keep even after your reign. Do you get to keep a tiara after your reign? Um, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, tiara, I don't have it with me and I don't think that we get to keep it. Um, but I know Andre has it. You know, it's okay. Safe we'll get Andre to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll quickly take some last few questions because we have to wrap up this live. Um, Bhavna Durga wants to know the best lessons you have learned so far as Miss Supranational. People want to know your experiences and everything. So, what is that best lesson you have learned so far as Miss Supranational? Ooh. Okay, let me think. For this one. That got you thinking. <laughs> um, I think if I can just say what's on the top of my head right now, um, I think no matter how many places you go or how many different types of people you meet, not everybody is going to love you. Not everyone is going to agree with you, and that's okay. I used to be really afraid of, you know, mean comments on social media, but then I realized that it's their opinion. I can't change it. I am who I am, and that's okay. And the only thing I can do is be true to myself and be kind to everyone and to show them that maybe I'm not what you think. Because we live in like an age where social media is such a big part of our lives. Totally. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. Um, um, that it was something that was really, that was really bothering me for a while. Um, but just being true to myself and everyone else will 
appreciate you for that. And also how important it is to be true to, you know, being grounded and being humble because like Andre said, winning a crown, winning a pageant doesn't change your life. Maybe it changes your thinking and it gives you more open doors to opportunities. But in the end, you're still you. And that's the most important thing that you have. So you have to keep it, keep it real. I can't believe that even you get hate online, but I must say, Antonia, and I'm not just saying it for the sake of it. You are a beautiful queen. I have been following your reign. And I must say that you have that energy that can bring smile to people's face. I loved your pictures during your Vietnam trip. I mean, you were looking like a sunshine. I mean, I was genuinely following all your pictures and everything. So, and I must say that you have evolved completely after winning Supernational. And I must congratulate the Miss Supernational team as well. And Andre, of course. Thank you so much. So please know you have a lot of lovers. One, two haters don't matter, but you are beautiful. And I'll quickly ask you the last two questions. Uh, because we know this is a, we all are in quarantine. So what is the best thing that you have realized during this quarantine period? The best thing I've realized during this quarantine period is, um, how do I, I know what I want to say. I'm trying to word it. <laughs> it makes sense. I think it's the appreciate, like we need to appreciate the time that definitely we have, the accessibility that we have to shelter, food, you know, clean water. Because there are so many people who are really struggling right now, even to get food because their there's their jobs are on hold because they have to be at home. So being able to be in a home and not having to worry about these very basic what is basic for us necessities is something that I think everyone needs to appreciate more during this time, especially time with family and you know spending time to focus on yourself as well and i think these are yep. some very important things that i think is helping us during you know while the world is on hold um and if i must say i think mother nature is trying to teach us a lesson <laughs> definitely it is uh, i want to ask you and have you heard of this that you will be a great bollywood actor because I can see so many comments coming your way that you can definitely bag a Bollywood movie. So any Bollywood plans, I'm sure when you were in India, I'm sure when you were in India, many journalists must have asked you. So is Bollywood the next step for you? But I, I genuinely want love, to say that. I would love do you to watch? go to Bollywood. Yeah. If I had the opportunity, I would definitely would love to try it. I got a lot of compliments from people saying that I look Indian or I could be in a Bollywood movie. Yes. So I'm, I definitely would love to try it if I get the chance. Any Bollywood step that you know? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> in terms of dancing, what was it? Mr. Rohit from Times taught me this one. Yeah. It, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the step. <laughs> this is a Bhangra step. Yes. And then there was. Um, I don't remember. Wait. Hold on. I'm trying to remember the video that I saw. It was, oh yeah, it was like this, and then you put down on your hip, and then you go up. <laughs> I'm telling you, we Indian fans would love to see you dancing on a Bollywood number. I would send you some songs as well. Please yes, dance on those numbers. I'm sure you will break the internet. Definitely in India, you will break the internet. Okay, yes, All right, quickly, I'll... <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And it was lovely talking to you. One last question for you. Yes. A quick message to everyone watching you live right now. And I'm really sorry if we could not pick all your questions, but we tried our best. So thank you. But uh, one last message for everyone. And Of course, I would love to thank everyone that's watching now. And if anyone wasn't able to watch, I want to just thank all the fans really for all your love all your you know appreciation and all the positive energy you send to me i read all your comments and i try my best to respond when i can um so i just want to say thank you so much and i hope that i can continue to make you happy that i am the miss supranational of this year or of 
2019. And I just hope everyone is staying safe now, being at home, um, being safe and being very responsible. It's, it's hard, I know, to be in this situation, but we are all going through this struggle. So this is a time where we all have to help each other and really try to understand the struggle that we're all facing. So please be safe. Practice social distancing. I know it's so hard. I'm also going through it. Um, don't forget to wear a mask when you leave the house. Wash your hands, please. Wash your hands. Keep them sanitized. And really just take the time to appreciate what, what you have now, your family, your home, the time you have, and just be kind to one another. This is, only, this is a time of, people, of struggle, and I think kindness is what we should be spreading right now, and we should limit the negativity and be more considerate Definitely. of each other. So thank you so much for all your comments. We tried to um, answer all of your questions. Uh, maybe I, I think I will go live again with maybe Valeria. So if you have any other questions, keep a lookout for a story where you can submit your questions and I would love to answer them. And of course, thank you so much, Priyanka, for interviewing me. It's so nice to finally meet you. Andrea has said so many yes. things about you. Okay. So it's so nice to finally get to talk to you. And thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And I must say that it was a wonderful chat with you. And we are sending you lots of love. You are a beautiful queen. And thank you so much for taking your time for doing this. Thank you so much. I would do it all every right. day. I love all of you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye, Anne. Take Bye. care. Namaste. To all the super fans, thank you so much for joining us. Lots of love. Bye. Thank you. Bye.